elk shape thing go on. And then one more little disclaimer. I do have, this is kind of a bit medically graphic presentation. So if that's something that you think you might have a problem with, then feel free to not stay around for this one. So <laughs> I'll be presenting on Zoe Winter's anatomical model series today. All right. Analog photography, in contrast to digital photography, is dependent upon the physical reaction between light and film. It can be seen as a process which more closely resembles how the human eye processes information. It's often interpreted as more direct, immediate, and closer to the truth than digital photography. Zoe Leonard is an analog photographer. She defines herself as such not only because of her dedication to her medium, but also her examinations of its boundaries. She exploits the verisimilitude of film photography to create constructed narratives. By compiling extensive installations of documentary photographs with her own interventionalist strategies, she creates archives of her experience for the world, with her own biases and agendas as a feminist and a contemporary artist. In her series, Anatomical Models, Leonard turns her lens to wax or preserve anatomical models of women from the 18th century. Found in museums and public exhibitions across Europe, these wax models were created to supplement medical students' study of anatomy. Evolving into stylized art form and public exhibitions, meant to educate as well as entertain the masses. Leonard's photographs of these models are not clear and rational. They shy away from the traditions of medical objectivity and instead edge into a Gothic sensibility. The Gothic stems from a horror or an inversion to what lies within man. Not only our physical bodies, but our capacity for evil. In this context, the exploitation of the disemboweled wax women provides societal reflection of what what fascinates and what repulses us. Leonard brings forth the insidious nature of these portrayals of women by emphasizing their latent capacity for evil, referencing both murder and physical horror. Alluding to horror films as well as archival images such as crime scene photography and cabinet cards, Leonard creates a gothic vocabulary that she imparts on these figures, which were presumably intended as objective medical images. Leonard utilizes the vocabulary of the gothic genre to impart a sense of danger and voyeurism to the models giving them a victimized narrative and highlighting the male gaze for which they were created. Feminist scholar Laura Mulvey defines the male gaze through the medium of cinema, with women serving as objects of observation, often filmed through a male perspective. The theory of the male gaze assumes that women are objects of the gaze, which is meant to appeal to a heterosexual male audience. Often exploiting women through a sexualized presentation in popular media, such as advertising, film, and television, Leonard takes this idea of the male gaze and applies it to the 18th century audience of these anatomical models and medical oddities photographed in her series. The models which Leonard photographs appeal to the male gaze through their sexual vulnerability, but also their appeals to heteronormative gender roles. This appeal to a male audience serves as an example of how the male gaze informs the medical field, which failed to view the female body with the same clinical objectivity as the male body. Leonard sees parallels between the presentation of these women and the presentation of women through the modern male gaze. By turning her own camera onto these models, Leonard is able to intervene on the objectification and to subvert the male dictates of women's bodies in both visual representation as well as medical treatment. Leonard's work is directly linked to the idea of the camera as the eye, and expounding upon that metaphor, a photograph is an extension of the stare. This metaphor is complicated when considering the anatomical model series. As scholar Rosemary Garland Thompson states in her work, Staring How We Look, the stare is distinct from the gaze, which has been extensively defined as an oppressive act of disciplinary looking that subordinates its victim. While the models which Leonard photographs are definitive examples of objects created for the male gaze, her photographs serve as both a stare referencing societal fascination with gender spectacle, as well as her own gaze looking back on relics of a patriarchal system. The models and curiosities which Leonard photographs were conceived as a means to understand the female body, either for its reproductive intricacies or gender-specific oddities. In doing so, they create an image of the female body as an other form. The Venuses of Leonard's series, resting peacefully at La Spicola, are icons of the classical normative view of female anatomy. The sculptors of Venus Venuses, as well as hundreds of other anatomical mo models, Clemente Susini, was renowned for the beauty which he gave the most revolting things, to quote from his obituary. Susini utilized human hair as well as exacting detail in his wax figures to create anatomically perfect and strikingly lifelike replicas of the human body. And you can see that here. These are color photographs, which are not really Leonard's photographs. And you'll see kind of the different way to see them depending on how she photographs them. 
His precision and realism, however, only extended to the practical anatomy of his female figures, modeling their stances, faces, and aesthetics around classical news and women from art history. Also referred to as the demountable Venus, a fitting term in both her ability to be dismantled and inspected anatomically, as well as her layers of meaning behind her creation, Cassini's Venus model is accompanied by a court of other wax women in matching Venetian glass and redwood cases. Lined up in a museum exhibition alongside the slashed beauty and the dissected graces. These models gave way to a trend in wax carving, setting the precedent for how women should be displayed in an anatomical setting. Beautiful objects and reproductive vessels. The confluence of beauty and horror which these models so perfectly encapsulate is something which struck Leonard upon her entry to La Scarpola, leading her to present her own interpretation of these figures through her photograph. Cassini's Venus lays head tilted back and away, her gaze never meeting the viewers. Her torso is elongated with breasts round and fixed atop her rib cage. She's a perfect model of Botticelli's Venus, although poor. Her stance, unnatural but familiar, is in a supine contrapposto. Her eyes are open just slightly, as if waking from a dream. The most striking of her features, however, is the pearl necklace that rests delicately along her neck. The string of pearls in conjunction with her impossibly long hair seems to bring forth her nakedness. She's less a nude and more so a naked female body. Aspects of her anatomy, such as her pubic hair, set her apart from classical means, as well as create unease for a modern viewer, a feeling Leonard exploits in her framing. The Venus does, however, echo the sexual power of the goddess from which she gains her name. Born from the ocean waves, Venus draws her life from the seed of the ocean. In many ways, the pearls around her neck can be seen as a signifier of the male force of the ocean in her creation, referencing semen and male sexual power. The idea of this Venus, laden with pregnancy, as a vessel for male sexuality, is echoed in the connotations of her inspiration. The Venus of Las Bacola is an object meant to be viewed in a sexual manner. Her pose is one of invitation, her nudity highlighted into a perversion of her vulnerability as a dissected form. The case that she's enclosed in is highlighted by the harsh lighting which blends up the glass surrounding her. The edge of a matching case can be seen at the top edges of some photographs, expressing along with Leonard's repetition that the Venus is one in a series, lacking autonomy even in her aesthetic value. She's also aligned with Leonard's interest in creating an archive of images, covering all angles. She displays all aspects of her anatomical model series in a repetitious collage style, incorporating smaller series within the greater exhibition, recalling not only an archive, but specimens in a museum. There is a notion of haphazardness to her placement, as if taken as a series of crime scene photographs of this eviscerated woman. The implication is clear that this is one of many photographs taken to capture angles for further examination. The gothic nature of this image comes not only from its black and white and high contrast shadows, but also from its allusion to the culturally ingrained images of women as victims, such as the Black Dahlia murders. Often seen as the most famous murder in American history, the killing of American Short of no, Elizabeth Short in 1947 was highly photographed with images distributed widely by the press. Her body was mutilated in a medical manner, bisected across her waist, and found with portions of her flesh surgically removed, including a portion of her lower abdomen resembling a hysterectomy incision. The image of the Black Dahlia, as she came to be named by the media, was one of a sexually promiscuous woman slain in her pursuit of fame in Los Angeles. She is yet another woman who, even in death, became defined as a sexual object. Her pose is startling in its sexual nature, her arms raised above her head, her genitals and breasts emphasized through her wounds. The images of the Venus and the Black Dahlia show the gore of bisection in conjunction with a highly passive stage pose. The Venus's features are contoured by the deep contrast from the light above her. The distortion hides her empty gaze as well as any other signifiers that she's a wax model and not a living woman. The light shutting off of her legs and stark white sheet beneath her serve to add depth to her wounds, creating the illusion of blood and viscera. Leonard is able to utilize the vocabulary of black and white photography to create an image which obscures the objectivity of this model, leaving the viewer with only illusions to more ghastly images like that of Elizabeth Short. Boundaries become very important when dealing with a female form. While the exterior is something to be objectified, the interior of the body can be a source of visceral horror. Leonard's contemporaries in the feminist art scene of the early 1990s exploited this notion to display their own medical and bodily autonomy. In her 1991 piece, Loop My Loop, Helen Chadwick braids pig intestine with glistening Barbie hair, creating a contrast that is both beautiful and repulsive, a comment on the commodification of women. Jane Parker experiments in the same way with her film K. The film, notably in black and white, shows the artist slowly emptying herself of a long string of intestines, pulling them from her mouth as they gather on the floor in a tangle. She then lifts them up, framing her, her nude form like a string of pearls, before knitting them together using her own arms. 
She's filtering the horror of her own body, creating order of what cannot be controlled. The gleaming, rubbery intestines of Parker's film stand in stark contrast to the rigidity of the wax organs found within the models of Leonard's series. The power of these images comes both from, their inter from the internal aspect of the human body, which the viewer space with, but also from the femininity of their subject matter. Their horror and fascination lies in the expectations of culturally instilled norms. The contrast of the female body, which the viewer is so accustomed to passively viewing, and the viscera of that body, which has become taboo. They actively exploit the male gaze to break down walls of objectification. While Leonard's contemporaries empower their own bodies through depictions of its complex, genderless functions, Leonard contributes their dialogue through highlighting the skewed view of women's bodies as oddities through her use of a Gothic vocabulary. Preserved head of a bearded woman and its accompanying photographs stand out in the anatomical model series. The subject is not a wax model, but a remnant of a time where the abnormal body was seen as a point of scientific analysis and morbid curiosity. Leonard's photograph captures the preserved taxidermy head of a woman from the 19th century. The very source of the bearded woman's oddity is partially obscured by Leonard's photograph, while the light reflected directly in front of her groomed beard obscures it. What are most visible are her gaze and the delicate lace of her collar. Her gender is simply implied, but the viewer sees the bearded woman. Her lack of any, body, any, any bodily gender signifier brings the possibility of a man in a lace collar. Her gender is told through the violence done upon her. She would not serve as an oddity to be preserved if she did not defy traditional femininity and beauty standards. The ambiguity of her gender also negates any scientific value that she may hold. Her dismemberment shows the true nature of the fascination in her. By photographing her in such a way as to highlight her glass case and identification tag, the focus of Leonard's image is on her treatment rather than her oddity. As Leonard stated in the, to the Seattle Times in 2012, with these pictures, I wanted to begin to construct a place of respect for her. This differs greatly from the way that the bearded woman would have been seen during her lifetime. After much investigation, Leonard has only been able to ascertain that the woman once worked as a circus performer at the turn of the 19th century. As a point of medical and cultural fascination, performers and freak shows would be photographed to advertise her particular talents as well as her oddities. Referred to as cabinet cards and like curiosity cabinets so popular in the Victorian era, these images would place the subject in a genteel upper-class environment, a mockery of their place outside of society. A remnant of this in Leonard's photograph can be found in the subject's collar, the head preserved in such a way as to include the fashion of the time, echoing the bizarre culmination of medical photography and entertainment which gave cabinet cards their popular appeal of curiosities. Created by managers and carnival owners, these cards are emblematic of an exploitive system that benefited from the public's fascination with physical otherness. Leonard draws the connection between her viewing of his preserved head and the fascination the Victorians held for advertised freaks. Leonard is struck, however, not by her oddity, but by the incredible lack of humanity that allowed for her mutilation. The preservation of freak show performers was shockingly not an uncommon practice. For those such as managers who saw the physical bodies of their clients as a source of income and fame, the death of the performer would often not limit their potential for profit. Reminiscent of the bearded woman of Leonard's series, Julia Pastrana, and her stillborn child were mummified by Pastrana's husband and manager, who traveled for years exhibiting their remains. Traveling under many titles, including Mexico's Monkey Woman, Pastrana was born with several genetic conditions, which led to the growth of hair over much of her body, conditions she passed on to the child she died giving birth to. Her oddity led to her portrayal as a primitive, ape-like woman, devoid of either personal or sexual autonomy. She was denied her humanity, even in death, due to signifiers that did not fit the society's norms of a modern woman. Zoe Leonard's photographs go beyond the boundaries of documentation. She creates connections across centuries, bringing to light those things which reflect back her own experience of the world. Upon finding the Venus at Las Spicola, Leonard states, she struck a chord in me. I couldn't stop thinking about her. She seemed to contain all I wanted to say in that moment, about feeling gutted, displayed, caught as an object of desire and horror at the same time. The 1990s saw a shift in focus from direct, seemingly overt, feminist criticism to a more subtle, transgressive approach, centered on the concrete facts and abject myths surrounding the female body. Leonard's interventions are deeply personal. Her subject matter is not dictated by philosophical doctrine, but by those aspects of daily life which stand out to her, the feeling of being displayed or disemboweled. While this series serves to bring out of the shadows the misogyny of medical culture, it began as a personal investigation sparked by an empathetic reaction. Leonard didn't just see womankind in the Venus and Las Picola. Thank you.